How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 22 of our Newcastle Let's Play. Today, a Carabao Cup final and a big game in the Premier League. This is our shot at redemption. Two Cup finals lost last year. Maybe it's third time lucky. Let's find out. Yes, folks, welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. We're well, hopefully going to get off to a fantastic start. We are taking on Manchester United to start the month of March, and then we're going to come back after all of these games you can see in the top right for the game against Man City. Of course, last episode we took on Atletico Madrid and Liverpool. It was a bit of a weird episode then, wasn't it? Two matches, two very different performances. I'm hoping that off the back of a fantastic 3-0 win, we're going to keep momentum going today. Just a quick look at Manchester United squad going into this game. There is no injuries to speak of. There are no players missing. It seems like fitness is high in their camp. So I'm expecting a difficult game today. But of course, the last time that we met them, we did get the better of them. It was only two episodes ago, but just as a little refresher, it finished 2-1. It was a cagey game. It was a nervy game. And we're going to play our five at the back again today, I think. And when it comes to team selection, I am going to put faith in the system. I'm going to put faith in the players the win against Atleti 3-0 away from home. As I mentioned, last year wasn't great, was it? The two cup final losses. This is our shot at redemption to kick off today's episode. It may well set the tone for today. Hopefully we're going to get a good result here. I want silverware. And whilst Carabao Cup kind of it's winners, it's not the most sexy of titles, is it? It's a title in itself. We'll take it. We'll make it work. Look, it's a trophy for the trophy cabinet. It's not a Champions League or a Premier League, but we'll get there eventually, maybe, hopefully. Anyway, let's get into this. Team selection for the games. You can see they've got a few slightly odd players. Players like Diogo Dalot coming into the team. Elsewhere, Cristiano Ronaldo takes the captain's armband. You can see Mikel Marino as well, starting at centre mid over Pogba, our former man. If he scores today, I'm not going to take it well. So looking at team selection, they are going to be playing that 4-2-3-1. For people wondering, how does a 39-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo look? He's still bloody good. He still can jump, which is perhaps his biggest threat from set pieces with the prominence of crosses in FM22. Hopefully we're going to be able to contain him and the rest of this motley crew today. 10 minutes into this game, very, very even thus far. 50-50 when it comes to possession, although... We've never really had a great deal of possession playing our five at the back. We're happy to really let them have the ball. Jaden Sancho, is, is, I think he's hurt. Should we put the ball out of play here? Nah, keep playing, lads. Keep playing. We're, we're, not, we're not nice here. Almada, he's still on the floor, bless him. Should we be worried? Adeyemi's there. Calvert-Lewin is relatively open in the middle. It's a great ball in, and the header is just over the crossbar. Uh, Jaden Sancho is still on the pitch for now. <laughs> Halfway through this first half, not a great deal of chances really to talk about. Uh, I say that. Talked one into existence. It's a corner. It was whipped towards Ronaldo. We've managed to head it away initially. Have to expect the ball to end up back in the box here though. And it will come to Ronaldo. And it just, it had to be, didn't it? It had to be. He headers it in off the crossbar like an absolute cannon. And United take the lead in this game after 30 minutes. I mean, when we played them before, we beat them 2-1. We conceded then. We can bounce back from this. Sancho has miraculously recovered, whipped in a crazy ball to the back post. And, uh, well, Ronaldo's done Ronaldo things and put them ahead. But it's about how we respond here. And respond, we might be about to. Musiala, edge the box, whips it in. Calvert-Lewin heads over. If only we add Ronaldo. We could be 2-1 up with the headers by now. Livermento at right back, throws it forward to Calvert-Lewin, he's going to use his body to hold up the play, Declan Rice, Almada, Calvert-Lewin almost gets goal side of his man, tries to tee it up for Adiemi, but dealt with well, and now Manchester United down this far side, Jadon Sancho dispossessed, lovely, lovely tackle there, and now we look to bring the ball forward ourselves, ball played down towards Calvert-Lewin, Luke Shaw gets an all-important header, at the moment, it seems like Calvert-Lewin is that outball at all times for us. He is the, the man that we're looking to pick out with balls from deep and in the wide areas. Well, we're going to come back at them again here. Tamori stepping out of defence with the ball. Afforded a little bit of time by Manchester United to progress with the ball. And uh, well, we're going to knock it around nicely at the back. Now we need some end product. Cal uh, Calvert-Lewin takes it down. He finishes it. I think he's offside which is why I've hesitated. Uh, he looked off to me. It was a really great finish, which will make it even more annoying if he is offside. VAR will check it. 
The AR is going to give it. I take it all back. Let's discuss how lovely this goal was. Liveramento plays it forward. Calvert-Lewin, one touch, two touch, bang. Top corners. No goalkeeper in the world is stopping that. It's 1-1. One, one, and I feel like a melon for not celebrating it now. So halfway through this game, we've been very good. An XG of 1.51, uh, a possession of 54% as well. We've looked good. We definitely grew into this game as it went on. Obviously, Manchester United scoring that header. Besides that, they've had a handful of chances, but very, very kind of low XG chances. Not particularly great opportunities. Hoping that the momentum that we've kind of picked up in this half is going to keep going. As, to be honest, we've looked pretty good in this game, all things considering. Although a game can change very quickly after the break. Luke Shaw is going to be afforded a lot of time and space here. Ronaldo now, options in the middle, queuing up. One is Greenwood, who tucks it into the bottom corner. It was a great finish. And, uh, well, seven minutes into the second half, we go down a goal again. We're going to have to fight back from behind, and it was all very, very simple. Loads and loads of men behind the ball. Defensive positioning is a bit of a shambles there, and that's probably an understatement. Greenwood's left completely unmarked in the middle. And uh, yeah, seven minutes into the half, we're down again, and it, it could get worse. There's a free kick that we need to deal with here. It's dinged forward to Rashford, who finishes it. That looked off, but then I thought the one that we scored looked off, so I'm not even going to comment on it. The AR, bail me out, please. All our players stop playing, so I'm, if it's not offside, I'm upset. It's not offside. I'm upset. We're 3-1 down. It was very, very close. Livakovic probably should do a bit better there. Um, mm, right, you know what? we, we got to go for this now, haven't we? we got to go for this. This is serious business all of a sudden. Uh, Adiemi's not had a very good game. I'm going to bring in Gabriel Barbosa. Um, we're going to shuffle around this team a little bit. Um, do I want to keep Livramento on the pitch? I think I do. I think Mukiele is perhaps the man to pull off in this game. We're going to bring in Ben Godfrey at defensive mid. Uh, elsewhere, Declan Rice is going to come off for Zakaria, I think. And, uh, well, when we made this change last episode, chasing a game against Liverpool, it didn't go to plan. We definitely need it to go to plan here, as we have, what, half an hour in this game to try and get two goals? To be honest, since half time, we've created absolutely nothing. And with 20 minutes left of the game, it's... It's time to push the tempo up just a little bit. Focus the play through the middle. In terms of how we're going to play, I want us to distribute it quickly to the flanks. Maybe try and get in behind the likes of Rashford and whoever it is who's now out on the left-hand side for them. And when it comes to pressing, we're just going to work our asses off for what remains of this game. Try and force an error. Try and force, well, a turnover in possession, perhaps in an advantageous position. With eight minutes left here, I think we all know what's about to happen. I don't want to acknowledge it. We're about to lose a cup final again. And this time, I think we're a little hard done by. 3-1 <laughs> it finishes. Maybe I'll just never win a trophy ever again in Football Manager. I'm kind of looking around, looking for an excuse. There is no excuse. We're just bottlers. Oh, it's, it is a little upsetting, isn't it, to watch Solskjaer passing the trophy over. And, uh, yeah, we've just lost in the, at Wembley again. I don't really like Wembley. Can we, do, can we play cup, cup finals elsewhere next time? I think it's the trip down south. Play, the players just don't respond to it. Well, that's depressing, isn't it? The worst thing about all of this is I've now got to go and play the month of March. The plan is to come back for the home game against Man City. That could well be the Premier League game that kind of puts a nice bow on a guaranteed top four finish, or certainly very close to guaranteed. Um, when it comes to the Champions League, we won the first leg 3-0. So with the game against Atleti, if suddenly they're winning 2-0 with 30 minutes left, the, the cut to this next segment might be very dramatic and it might be me panicked in the match engine. Fingers crossed, touch wood, it's not me reporting live uh, on the scenes from <laughs> St. James's Park against Atleti. Um, but future Jack will figure it out. Hopefully we've won that game. Let's go forward and find out. Man City, you're up. Okay, folks, we are back. And are we taking on Man City? No, 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 we're not. The, the schedule got moved around. We've got Villa in the FA Cup. I thought this would be a good game to come back for. Uh, Aston Villa currently seventh in the Premier League. Kind of best of the rest. And away from home against them, it's not going to be a freebie. Unfortunately, the Man City game got moved out with an FA Cup run. 
that began immediately after the Carabao defeat, which for me personally in the out of football manager world happened yesterday. It's a new day today. I've still not really recovered from another final defeat, but these results made me feel a little bit better. We beat Southampton 6-1. We were winning this game 5-0 at halftime. It never looked in doubt. Against Crystal Palace, we won 2-1. Thiago Almada and Calvert-Lewin with the goals there. Against Chelsea in the Premier League, a 5-0 win. Yes, we have this habit of having these super emphatic results. Calvert-Lewin in this one grabbed a hat-trick. His goal-scoring form continues. 20 goals he has in the Premier League now. That is more than in the previous couple of years. Still plenty of games to add to that total too. And well, for those of you that were hoping we might be back here for the Atletico game, kind of midway through the second half with me in a blind panic, I hate to ruin it for you. We beat them 5-0. Uh, yeah, if you thought the 3-0 last episode was a fluke, it wasn't. We demolished them here as well. Calvert-Lewin again getting a hat-trick. He's bloody good. Um, used this as an opportunity to rotate the team quite a lot. And the rotated team beat Atleti by even more than our first choice team. Nice to see the likes of Mbabu, Zakaria, Michaelenko, Hickey kind of come into the team. We did have a sprinkling of first team players. The likes of Calvert-Lewin and Musiala did start. They were taken off at halftime and 5-0 uh, it finished. And where does that leave us in the Champions League? You might wonder. It means that for tomorrow's episode, the quarterfinal of that, we've got Chelsea. We just beat 5-0. We've done well against Chelsea in live comms recently. I have confidence we will beat them. Now, of course, it's the month of March. We've had our youth intake. It was a one-star youth intake. I don't really want to talk about it. There's no one good here. I've asked my director of football to sign the players he thinks might be good. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot to say here. Uh, Dunbar apparently is the best of the players. I mean, he's okay. That's very generous. He's absolutely awful. It's an intake that's just not worth talking about. Why are we wasting time here? Just to have a quick look at the Premier League table with those few league games we've played. As you can see here, a game in hand on Liverpool we have. If we win it, we would still be four points behind them. With eight games left of the season, it's looking increasingly unlikely that gap is ever going to close. As for the teams behind us, Manchester United and Man City both joint on 69 points. A very nice total. It is six points behind us though, so I'm hoping... We're going to be able to hold on to a top two spot here. Realistically, looking at the games we've got remaining this season, I think the FA Cup and the Champions League are going to be the things in focus. If we lose today in this FA Cup game, it all basically becomes about the Champions League for the rest of the year, which is a little bit scary because if we beat Chelsea, we're going to play Manchester United or Arsenal in the semi-finals. Yeah, I don't know what to say. If we lose to Manchester United in another competition, I might cry. So in terms of team selection for this game, I'm going to go a little bit conservative. I need to show Aston Villa some respect. We're going to play the five at the back. We are going with a full strength team. No injuries to speak of. The team was rested against Atleti, so we come into this one ready and refreshed. You might remember Calvert-Lewin played advance forward for the, a few recent games. That experiment is over. He is back playing as the pressing forward, and he is in the process of signing a new deal with the club, which will secure his contract and his uh, allegiances until the age of 32 for a further two years on the end of his contract. So hoping to get that one sorted. A few other players also in the process of getting their contracts extended. We don't actually have anyone who's at immediate risk of leaving us on a free either this year or even next year. Okay, so the FA Cup. This is a competition we lost in the final of last year. I think we can say that about just about every competition. But no, for real, I would love to win it this year as a kind of shot at redemption, especially after bottling that Carabao Cup final against Manchester United. I feel like this is not an easy game, as I mentioned. It'd be one of those games that's easy to look at from the outside in and go, oh, well, you're going to win that. They're not that good. They're seventh for a reason, and Villa's home form has been kind of their big strength, actually, in the league. So I'm expecting a battle, and oh my word, they hit the crossbar with half an hour gone here. We are holding on for dear life. We are still in the lead. I mean, could we hit them directly on the counter-attack from that effort? They hit the crossbar. Livramendo, Adiemi. Calvert-Lewin's in the middle. Livramento might still get it to him. Calvert-Lewin heads it. Martinez clings on. And, uh, well, a lively end-to-end -end game emerging here. We're not having as much of the ball as Villa. It's, in fact, it's very 50-50. But in terms of chances created, we've been on top in this game. But we haven't seen any highlights. Until now, Luca Digny. Plenty of corners assisted this year. He whips it in for Calvert-Lewin. The goal number 46 of the season. 46. That's that's pretty bonkers. Of course, 
from open play, he's been good. From corners this year, he's been really good as well, actually. Vicodini's deliveries shouldn't be underestimated. He's been so high up the average ratings in the league and in just every competition we play in. I mean, if we just have a look at him, he has 20 assists in 37 games. The vast majority of those are corners. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if the most of them are to Calvert-Lewin as well. But yes, we are ahead in this game by a singular goal. It was a set piece. It was a good first half performance, a controlling one. But given the fact they did create that one opportunity, not going to get complacent here. I'm looking across our team, seeing a couple of players on bookings, thinking maybe it's time to bring in Mbappu. Maybe it's time to bring in Zakaria. We really can't afford to go down a man in this game. And with 28 minutes left, maybe it's time to inject some fresh legs into the midfield and the defence. Esri Konza playing right back for Villa in this game is very, very interesting. They've also got Kondogbia. They've got some pretty good players in their team, this Villa team, as they knock the ball around with some confidence and some swagger till Samuel Lino gets one-on-one -on -one and puts it wide. I feel like this has been the least convincing, convincing win ever. Yes, they've had the odd opportunity here and there, but for the most part, we have bossed this game. I would still like another goal with a couple of minutes left. Almost feels like an air of inevitability that this one's just destined to finish 1-0, but maybe Mbappu can change our fate. Not with a ball like that, though. That was overhit, and well, describing it as overhit might be generous. It was absolutely awful. But we'll look to build again from the back here. Mukiele's picked up a little bit of a knock. I may well take him off after this highlight. Mbappu, down the byline. Players queuing up in the middle. Of course, Calvert-Lewin is one of them. Mukiele... With that knock, comes forward. And Babu, crucial interception to Mukiele with the knock. He's not coming off the pitch. I'm keeping him on. If the man can score goals like that when he has an injury, what can he do when he's fully fit? It's 2-0 here. That is not the goal scorer I necessarily predicted. I've looked at stuff like our stats from open play. Our wide centre-backs average a shot every other game. Kind of, And that obviously includes corners and set pieces. They don't get into shooting positions often. Maybe they should just shoot more because efforts like that are ending up in the back of the net. And I think that's going to be the, the goal that really secures this result. A game that could have been a tricky one away from home against a team going strong. Ultimately, though, I think our superior quality showed. And defensively, we look really, really solid for the most part. Maybe on another day, Villa would have got a goal or two. Mukiele is going to be out for four to six days with a twisted knee. The good news for us is we're about to go into an international break, so he will be able to recover from that. Players will be able to rest up. And in terms of when we're going to be back next time, as I already mentioned, it's all about the Champions League now and the FA Cup. I think next time out, we're going to come back for the Champions League uh, quarterfinals. It is against Chelsea. The first leg's away from home. We will, of course, do both legs as a double header. I'm nervous. I'm excited. We have a habit of bottling things in the cup, so... I'm expecting more of the same tomorrow, but you'll have to tune in to find out. If you've enjoyed this video and got to the end of it, as always, do drop a like on it. Feed the YouTube algorithm. Um, by feeding the YouTube algorithm, you do indirectly feed Editing Jack. Take care, enjoy your Saturday, and until next time, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.